Uh, Governor Jesse Ventura, uh, we've seen a big national news story claiming that uh, this Navy SEAL who just had a book come out this week uh, at a bar knocked you down and then ran away because you were saying you were glad that Navy SEALs were dead. I mean, it sounds like something out of the Twilight Zone. Well, Alex, anyone that's ever heard me talk knows that that's not true at all. I have no idea uh, why this person is saying it or for what purpose it's to serve. But, you know, if he if he stated that he struck me, knocked me down and then fled, um, I want people to understand clearly he's confessing then to the crime of assault. And it's assault on a former governor, uh, an elected official, a former elected official twice. I want to clear his name because he's confessing to assaulting me and it didn't happen. I can unequivocally tell you that I've never been punched in Coronado, California since I've been out of the Navy. I got out of the Navy in active duty in 1973. And I've never been struck by anyone. I've been out there multiple times for uh, reunions that are the third weekend in August every year. And uh, this may have been the graduation, what he's talking about in 06 of, of class 258, because it's traditional that when 100 years, I was class 58, when 158 graduated back, I believe in the 80s, uh, I went to that graduation because that's a tradition. And then when 258 graduated in 2006, I believe it was, I went to that. But uh, And McPee's Bar is owned by uh, uh, Doc McPartland, who was my SEAL cadre instructor. When I just came out of training, he, he instructed me in SEAL SBI, SEAL Basic Indoctrination. And he owns that establishment, and I would never, ever misbehave in, in the doc's establishment. I have too much respect for him. And if people truly want to clear this up, call him. Call McPee's, because if a former governor within the SEAL community had been knocked down and hit and assaulted, uh, it would have traveled through the SEAL community like wildfire. And uh, for this to be, now say it happened five and a half or six years after it happened, that's absurd. But I want to state that even though this person is confessing to committing a crime against me of assault, I want to state unequivocally he is not guilty of that crime because he never hit me. I don't even know who he is. I'm, if I've met him or not, I don't know it. Uh, his name, I don't even know it right now as I talk to you. I just know that he, uh, he made accusations that he hit me back in 06, I guess, and that he fleed the bar. Uh, if that was true, Alex, maybe I should go up since he's confessing to a crime. Maybe I should go up and file the charges. There are, and if he did do this, and and said police were coming or whatever it was he stated um wouldn't there be a police report i can assure you there isn't one and i can assure you this event did not happen uh nobody has ever hit me when i've been up there other uh, since i've been off active duty let me categorize that i got off active duty in 73 Nobody there have I ever been in any trouble or did anything but reunions and, and, and uh, uh, graduations or whatever it might have been or retirement. I, uh, and, and the thing is, you're never at McPee's alone. You're there with your teammates and your classmates and you're all celebrating. When you go to McPee's, there'll be at least five or six guys with you. Well, I would sure like to he hear of a witness that saw of this event. Because it never happened. It's plain and that simple. And what does concern me is that this is two times now within about a two-week period where the mainstream media has, has ran with something that was completely untrue. As you know, they stated that I was tailgating a car a couple of weeks ago out in the San Fernando Valley on the way to the airport. And that was solely not true because I haven't been to California uh, for six months and I haven't flown in an airplane for 15 months and you can attest to that because you were with me the last time I flew in a commercial airliner and that was over well over a year ago so it's two times now that that bogus serious false stories have been perpetuated out there by the mainstream media against me 
And I guess, Alex, I can only say I get, maybe because I'm rattling my sword about the elections, maybe because I support Ron Paul, who's not popular or, whatever, or, or they say he's fringe because he stands for peace. Maybe because I support peace and not war in this country now, uh, that makes you a target for the people that do support war. I don't know. I'm only speculating there, but I'll let you have it, Alex, and you can speak. But I, I just want to tell you unequivocally, this event did not happen. And I can't speak to anything else that uh, this person would say because I don't know him. To my knowledge, I've never, ever even met him. Maybe I have. I don't know. But, uh, but you know, you meet a lot of the younger guys, but you don't recall who they are. But never have I ever been hit or treated disrespectfully in the Navy UDT SEAL community at McPee's bar or any official UDT SEAL function in any way. In fact, I'm treated with honor and dignity at all times. So uh, I don't know where this story or why this young gentleman wants to plead that he committed a crime against me, but I can unequivocally plead for his innocence because the event never happened. Uh, Governor... So he, 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 yeah. Uh, Governor Jesse Ventura joins us from Mexico down on the Baja via audio. Skype, so there's a bit of the delay when I talk to him. Uh, Tyrell was just able to get a hold of him yesterday. Uh, this, strangely enough, happened right as Jesse drove his RV into Mexico and was out of phone reach for three days driving to the Baja. Uh, he drove uh, because he refuses to fly all the way from Minnesota to Baja, and he just learned from his son that on Bill O'Reilly's Fox on at least 10 other Fox shows, syndicated radio, newspapers. They are all reporting as if it's absolute fact. Here's a Fox News headline. Navy SEAL sniper punched out Jesse Ventura. But, sir, uh, his name is Chris Kyle. He has a book coming out. He's starting a big mercenary firm to train domestic law enforcement to, quote, deal with the uh, domestic insurgents. So it, it, it gets into the whole NDAA. They're kind of setting him up as this big hero and you the villain, but this is not the main issue. So you're you're categorically denying, saying call the owner of the bar, uh, who was you know one of your main trainees when you were in SEALs decades ago. Obviously, this would have been out in the news beforehand, but that's not the big issue. And I'm sad to have to raise this to you, but but I know in your Facebook comment, also posted at Infowars.com, you've responded. He has gone on all these shows and 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 said it's terrible. There's the family with the wake. He's talking bad about this Congressional Medal of Honor winner, and, and I say, please stop, and Jesse says, they deserve to die. You deserve to die. I mean, clearly the most horrible thing you could say, designed to destroy your character, if this isn't defamation, I don't know what is. It's one thing to say, I'm a tough guy, I, you know, knocked Jesse Ventura down and then ran away, which makes no sense. And then to defame the SEALs and say they teach us to punch you once and run away. I've been contacted by SEALs and others saying that's pure bull. But the fact, Governor, that he would say that you were celebrating in front of a family the death of their son, uh, I mean, this is incredible, Governor. What do you say to that? Well, I say that, you know, that's, you know, I, I have never supported the Iraq war. And let me say this clearly, wars are not caused by the soldiers, the sailors and the airmen. Wars are caused by politicians. Politicians take us to war. And I have been critical, so critical of the politicians that took us to the Iraq war. And I have every right to do so. But I can tell you, Alex Jones, I have all the sympathy in the world for the soldiers, having been one. And anyone that questions uh, my patriotism that I would behave this manner, that's a direct insult to me, my family. It's a direct insult to my mother and father. My father had six bronze battle stars in World War II. My mother was a World War II veteran, a nurse in North Africa. My brother... My brother is a Vietnam veteran, served in Da Nang, and myself a veteran. My entire family are veterans. We were all enlisted men. We were at the bottom rung of who joins and goes and has to fight and go to war. So for someone to state that I would take joy and pleasure, and especially one of my SEAL teammates would die, that I would enjoy that is despicable. It's wrong 
and this never happened. And I can't know what, what the motives are for this. Uh, I can only assume that obviously the war machine or the people that support war uh, do not like to hear people talk who don't support war. But I have never, ever wished death upon ever, any military serviceman. Alex, that's the most ridiculous thing we've known each other. Go back and look at everything I've ever said in public that is recorded. You always you say the no same thing. Input. You always say, that, I mean, I've been in airports where you shake the troops' hands, thank them for their service, get a tear in your eye and say, be safe. You've always said you're against the wars, feeding these good men and women in there. When I called you when the Navy SEALs helicopter, the ones that knew about the bin Laden raid, and it blew up, you got upset on the phone. And this is clearly designed, he says it with real pleasure in his eyes, uh, to make the military and the Navy SEAL community turn against you. It's the worst thing, the worst story that you could ever make up. And it is vicious. And, and I, I have to think it's more than to just sell this book. Uh, when you find out he's going after government contracts internationally with the military and domestic police agencies with his craft group, uh, it is super creepy. Uh, Governor, to Fox News, who's the main, I mean, they are, they're acting like this is the number one story in the country. They are, I, I mean, for four days, every other show, this guy's on there. They're reporting it as it's a fact. They're clearly going after you. Obviously, do you want to call for a retraction? Because it, they don't put a Navy SEAL claims he punched out Ventura. They state it like they got video of it. They never try to call the bar owner. They never call for witnesses. They just put him on TV like it's true and, and and this is unbelievable well certainly i would like a retraction and uh you know i i've uh i i'm you know i'm going to defend myself alex i'm not going to say over the show what i'm doing right now but uh, you know i'm i'm not taking this line down this is extremely serious it's heartbreaking uh, truly to me that someone would accuse me. Because like I said, it's like accusing my family. My mother and father taught me and they taught me well. And, and you know, everyone in my family's a veteran. And anyone who knows me, the guys that served with me, why don't, why don't they talk to some of them and ask them how I was? Talk to my master chief, Terry Mother Moy, you know, and, and, and ask him. Would I say anything like this? This is absurd, and it can be easily uh, counteracted if I was up in the States. But again, like you said, Alex, how timely. Uh, obviously, I must be under some type of surveillance for people to know exactly when I would cross the border and have no means to communicate or to, to fight for myself, and it would give them the time to sink this story in and, uh, and, and across the airwaves. And then, of course, fiction becomes fact, I guess, was many times. You know, the damage is done. I can't do anything about that. But you can bet that I will seek a full retraction of this. And I'll tell you, if you want to, anyone wants on your show, uh, I demand a retraction because what this person is saying is unequivocally untrue. If I would have said those things, he would have hit me. But he never hit me. So clearly, Alex, I did not say those things. If, if, if this Kyle uh, individual, this Chris Kyle, was standing in front of you, uh, who wants to make his big name off to trying to destroy your honor, if he was standing in front of you right now, what would you say to him? Because undoubtedly, he's going to watch this. I would simply ask him uh, um, why he would lie about committing a crime against me. Why would he go on national TV and lie about assaulting me, which is a crime, and, uh, and admit that he did it? What'd you say? And, and admit that he did it if he said he did. And, and I know I'd look at him and smile and go, you've never hit me in your life. Well, it's incredibly... You, you've never hit me. I mean, I mean, it's incredibly cowardly. You know, I, I've done a lot of interviews with you, Governor, and, and, and been on your TV show for three seasons now. But, and I've you know, met your wife, great lady. I, I know she's been in the background before during interviews. I've never heard her jumping in. Sounds like Terry's pretty upset. What's your wife think of this? No, this, of course she is. We've been married 36 years. She knows me better than any other person on the planet does. And... Like any couple, when one couple is hurt, the other feels the pain also. 
Anyone that's ever been in love and had a wife knows that. And so, sure, she's feeling my pain. She's feeling it with me as she always has. She, but uh, there's not a more loyal person in the world and, uh, uh, than her. And uh, I know I always have her support 100%. And she certainly, she has been out there with me. My wife has been to McPee's. Uh, she knows that nothing like that would ever happen or she would know about it. She's friends with many of my SEAL Team teammates. Uh, I, I challenge this, Alex. I challenge the SEAL community for anyone else who knows of this event to come forward because no one will. And if they do, they're being untruthful because it did not happen unequivocally. This guy never hit me. I don't even know him. If he walked into the room right now, Alex, I wouldn't know who he was. Well, uh, when it when the truth comes out, he's going to be known as a, basically a Benedict Arnold. Next to the word defamation in the dictionary is going to be a picture of this guy because I cannot imagine anything more dishonorable than, than, than to be part of a community, an elite community of people that serve their country and then to concoct such a horrible lie and then to try to bring so much pain to uh, the Navy SEALs and their families that have lost or been wounded and to try to blame it all on you, it is beyond sickening and disgusting and cowardly. And that's why when I heard this and saw this and registered the body language, I went and did research on this guy and a chill went up my spine. The Richard Pearl, Dick Cheney connections, uh, you know, he's a he's an Eric Prince Blackwater wannabe setting this thing up in Dallas. I thought, oh my God, they, they put him up to this and I got I got... I got nauseous, nauseous by Friday when I could. I, I knew this was going to be pure bull, Jesse. And I, I just, I just cannot believe it. Just well, look, they're scared of you. You ought to be proud they're doing this. They want to destroy you politically, even though you weren't intending to run. Uh, and, and I, you know, I wrote an article yesterday about this with Paul Watson. I said this may have the opposite effect. If they think this is going to run you off and 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 make you go into the sunset, this may pull you out of the sunset, Jesse. Because I know you've been veering towards going off into the sunset. Well, only to surf, Alex. You know, but again, on a, on a serious note, for him to make allegations that I would take any joy in a United States military person dying in a war, I don't. And when you ask me what, what I would say to him if I saw him face to face, I would say, how dare you? I can be against a war, but I have never ever been against the poor soldiers, sailors and airmen that have to fight it, regardless of which war that is. And I've lived through a lot of them, Alex, because it's 30 years now of my life that my country has been at war. And I'm sick of war, and I'll say it to anybody, I despise war. War is the failure of politicians. Their ultimate failure is the ultimate, ultimately why you have war. But I would never, ever say anything to hurt any soldier, sailor, or airman because they did their job. Is that strong enough, Alex? It's strong, Governor. Uh, I, I just wonder what they're thinking because Fox News and others have really opened themselves up repeatedly stating this like it's a fact. They never say claim. They say, uh, but again, knocking you out, that's to make you, you know, defame you as a tough guy, as you're known to be. And then, but that's nothing in my view, as you've agreed. I mean, I... I mean, they've got to know that you're obviously going to come after them. And it's just, it's mind blowing that they, before Fox went with this, before others did, that they didn't call McPease and find out that this was total bull. Well, it is total bull because, uh, you know, Doc McPartland, like I said, I've known him. He was one of my instructors after I completed BUDS and I went to what they call SBI, SEAL Basic Indoctrination. And I see the doc all the time when I'm down there. I always ask him how business is going. And, and, and if this event would have happened in his bar five and a half years ago, or his, it's a bar eating establishment, both. If this would have happened, this would have been on the news five and a half years ago. How does it suddenly rear its head five and a half years later? Because it's not true. It did not happen. 
Nobody's ever hit me there. Nothing like that has happened. And, you know, I'll be interested to see what witnesses can possibly come forward to this event because you can't have a witness to an event that didn't happen. That's right. And, and Fox and all the other channels always just take clips of interviews from my show without asking. But uh, I'm, I'm here giving them permission if they want to try to begin to set things right. Not that that's possible. But, I mean, they're basically on notice. You better retract. And then knowing them, they don't care. I mean, look at News Corp with what they've been caught doing in England. Spying, bribing, wiretapping people. Uh, they have the New York Post, uh, you know, do similar things before that they did have to retract on 9-11 truth groups. And, they're, and, the, and they just don't care. They've got a mission because they know they're getting ready to start a new war. And they want to try to discredit you ahead of that. They hate the fact that you are a UDT Navy SEAL. They hate the fact that you're a popular movie star, wrestler, uh, governor, mayor, best-selling author. Alex, they Alex, Alex, let me interject for a moment on McPease. McPease would never let me back in if I would have said those things. I can tell you that. Doc McPartland would never even let me set my foot in there if I would have stated what this guy said I said. Well, they're trying to turn the whole SEAL community against you. I, I think this is just it. Look, you called into my show first, and then you were on the local TV and newspapers the next day with retractions when they said you were tailgating like a maniac in California getting to the airport, and I just talked to you the day before to get you on the radio show the next week. You were in Minnesota. I called your Minnesota. I mean, you, don't, you, you haven't flown in 16 months because of the TSA groping you. It's all over the news. You're suing them. All of this is going on, and they have TMZ hooked up with Fox come out and say that you're this maniac, and then they remove the article but don't retract when your lawyer calls them, and now they do this again with this guy rolling out of, uh, I think this guy's a useful idiot that the insiders contacted and talked into doing this. I mean, that's clearly what happened here, and I don't, I, he doesn't seem like he's that smart, and I think he's going to get in a lot of trouble. Well, I don't know. I, I, you know, like I said, uh, I'm going to do what I need to do to uh, uh, clear, clear this matter up. You know, I won't rest on just simply talking to you. I will, you know, pursue other avenues, but it's difficult for me because of the timing. I'm way down here in Mexico right now, and, uh, you know, I don't have access to get on television and deny these charges unless I drive all the way back up. And, you know, that's a two-day drive that's very brutal. So uh, I, the timing of this is also very remarkable, Alex, and it's amazing that, you know, but I, I thank you because just keep, I, I, in fact, I have to ask you, Alex, help. You're my man right now. You're my media guy. You're the only guy I have access to talk to. So it's going to fall on your shoulders, my friend, to clear my name here immediately. Well, we all know what happened. You bet. I'm the one. It was my crew showed it to me a few hours after it happened. That was on Wednesday. And I said, this is going to, no, that was Thursday. I said, this is going to get really, really big. And uh, by Friday, it was all over the TV stations. And I just kept, you know, telling Ty, who was trying you every five minutes, try to get your dad. To, you know, obviously this isn't true, but we got to get a response. And now they, I'm sure they think it's real funny what they've done. And I know, you know, you've been working really hard. You deserve a vacation. But I'm afraid you're going to probably have to get back in the RV and drive up to California. But here's the problem. You know, in the last five years, when you went on CNN, Fox, you cleaned their clocks. So now they don't have you on as often. And uh, I think they're probably going to try to close the doors on you so they can just get away with all this. But they're not going to be able to ignore, obviously, what comes out of it later. Uh, but um, that's just what Rupert Murdoch does. But I think you're right. Your initial point that this is News Corps doing this, this is their specialty. And so you ought to, I mean, it's the mark of the fact that you're a patriot and that you'll tell, talk about 9-11 being an, ins having evidence of inside job. You'll talk about Kennedy being assassinated by the government or elements of it. You'll talk about the wars being frauds. Uh, you'll talk about all this, so they need to try to destroy you ahead of this big police state. You've been criticizing their NDAA, their their TSA, the checkpoints on the highways. Uh, look, look, they're in. They're putting out fake ads saying that Ron Paul put them out being racist towards Asians, and then it turned out it was tracked back to uh, Huntsman's people. And, and but the media now won't won't retract it. I mean, they're they're listen. They've got people dressed up as racist hayseeds claiming that they support Rand Paul and Ron Paul and getting caught. They're, they're, uh, Governor, I think you're going to see more dirty tricks. I mean, they, because you're over the target. 
Well, maybe so, Alex. You know, that there's nothing I can do about that. I'm going to be who I am. I'm going to continue to speak out on everything because I believe, I believe in our Constitution. I believe in our Bill of Rights. And I believe that they're right in the crosshairs right now. If the country doesn't rise up and protect citizens and, and our Constitution and Bill of Rights, that we're going to lose our country. Because uh, I truly believe that. Because everything that I'm learning and the more I get into it and see what's going on, the more we have to be that much more vigilant. And as I said, I'm, i got to count on you now, Alex, because right now my hands are tied down here. I don't have the ability to... To, uh, although, if, if it could be set up that I could do television somewhere, I would be happy to go you know, on satellite and go on any one of these shows. So if you're in contact with Fox, who appear, appears to be out to destroy me, tell them I'll be available anytime I possibly can. But because of the remoteness of where I live, it's difficult. Yeah, you may have to drive into some major Mexican city, too, and probably do an uplink there. Uh, well... I, I just can't believe they, I mean, I guess they've already destroyed their credibility so many times. Uh, they don't care about uh, doing this again and again. And, and again, this is an issue not just of Jesse Ventura. It's an issue of anybody that stands up for what they believe in. And it's, it's upsetting them. You pointed out that on your TV show, a lot of the guests now will not fly uh, to be interviewed. They drive in RVs or they drive in cars. I do it most of the time now. Uh, last time I flew out of Austin, the supervisor came over and said, you're a troublemaker. We don't like you talking bad about us. And I pretty much laughed at him, but he was trying to intimidate me. And I can't fly with my family. I will not object them to the, to the molestation, the groping, because I physically can't, can't have it. I tried one time, and it was quite a scene. Uh, and so, uh, I, mean, I mean, it's just gotten to the point where they're cornering us more and more. And you're prominent. They're scared of you. Uh, and again, it's a, it's a red badge of courage, Governor. This would not be happening if they weren't scared of you. So I know it's horrible to have people say things about you that aren't true. Uh, but the good news is a lot of people aren't buying this. I mean, the, uh, and a lot of SEALs are coming out on, on the official Navy SEAL websites. Uh, the, uh, that is the uh, sites that are run by former SEALs and others and saying they don't teach us to punch somebody in a bar and run. And, and I brought that up to Ty and he said, yeah, I brought that up to my dad. But you know, my dad said that, of course, they don't teach that, but that's pointless. This never happened. And, and, and I mean, I would call on Chris Kyle to, to understand this is going to end up coming out and he better come out now and apologize and admit that somebody put him up to this before it gets to the point where he's raising his right hand. Governor, you agree with that? Uh, absolutely, because, uh, yeah, I, I agree totally that it would be in his best interest to tell the truth. Absolutely, that this thing never happened and, and that it's all fabricated because the longer it goes on, the worse and worse it's going to be. Wow. Uh, well, Governor, thank you so much. Uh, you've got our hotline numbers here throughout the week. Anytime you've got points you want to make, uh, and, and, and I know you're down there to exercise and to t you know, take a few months off before you come back. And I know you're down there writing another book uh, that's coming out uh, uh, later this year. But what a way to start 2012. Uh, they are cer I mean, the sim something similar happened to me. And you know it's staged when suddenly it's all over the Dallas Morning News, Denver Post, national TV within minutes. You know, extras calling you. But I was out there protesting uh, Obama in 2008 at the... Uh, DNC because I knew he was going to be the same as Bush and Michelle Malkin shows up and these people start screaming kill Michelle Malkin and getting behind me and leaning down behind me and they had cameras and I was like what are you doing and they had a mask and hats on and then I saw them leave with Malkin and I was like what was that and then the headlines were out within hours that I was saying kill Michelle Malkin leading a mob and I had people saying your career is over, you're saying kill women. Thank God we were able to upload video. I threatened to sue a bunch of people and all retracted with the Dallas Morning News, but that was enough to discredit them. And they, and they tried to say I was saying kill a woman, Gov. So I've, I've had them do similar stuff. Let me just say this, Alex, I won't threaten. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's just amazing. If you get what I just said, wait, if you got what I just said to you, I won't threaten it. You sound pretty mad at uh, at Chris Kyle. Well, I didn't even know his name until you told it to me today. 
that shows you how distant this whole thing is. I don't even know who he is. I, I, I have no idea if I've ever met him because, you know, when I go out there, you meet many other SEALs that weren't of your era and, you know, hi, how you doing? You shake hands or whatever it might be, or they come up to you. Cause I know for many times I was there always with Rudy Bosch, you know, chief Bosch mm -hmm. from survivor. And we would be so inundated with picture taking that we would sit and laugh and Rudy and I would say, you know, we need to get those cardboard cutouts so everyone can stand next to us and get their picture taken. And that way we can go over and enjoy and have fun because it would take it, you know, at that point, Rudy was red hot because he was the original survivor show and all that. And so that would go on. So there has never been a time at any SEAL event that I've gone to where I felt threatened, where I've been assaulted, where anything bad has ever happened to me. And, you know, being flattened or knocked down into a bar, in a bar five years ago, you would think I could remember that, Alex. You'd think that would make an impression on me, but it hasn't. But we know, because, because I've seen you with troops and had you on my show 50 times and seen in other shows, you always say, my heart goes out to those dying because of these lying politicians. It's so horrible. I mean, you would never say something like that. I've seen you talk about your mom and dad and get a tear in your eye. I mean, that is such a load of venomous garbage. And, and I want to close with a quote here of an advisor to Fox News and, and one of their main political correspondents in an interview with the New York Times Magazine, October 17, 2004, when Karl Rove said, in what we call the reality-based community, which he defined as people who believe the solutions emerge from your judicious study of discernible reality, that, quote, that's not the way the world really works anymore, he continued. We're an empire now, and when we act, we create our own reality. And while you're studying that reality judiciously, as you will, we'll act again, creating other new realities, which you can study too, and that's how things will sort out. We're history's actors, and you, all of you, will be left just to study what we do. My dad last night was over for dinner, and he said this reeks of Karl Rove, who lives here in Austin, by the way, and, 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 and regardless, they think they can just tell the public something and that makes it reality, like Obama saying dropping bombs all over Libya is not a military action but is a kinetic action. Uh, they think just because they roll some punk out to say something that makes it true, Governor. Well, absolutely, and it doesn't make it true. And when I come back and get back up there, the, uh, in fact, before I get there, you know, the, the ball will be rolling. You know, I'm, I'm doing what I can do to clear my name, and I'll do whatever it takes to do that because, uh, you know, I, I'm the kind of guy, Alex, I'll, I'll be happy to admit when I do something, but I don't want to be credited with things that I don't do. And uh, I would think this yeah. guy wouldn't want to be credited also with assaulting me. You know, he never did it. It never happened, and why? I, I, somebody needs to ask him why he's telling this story because it's not true. Well, I tell you, Gov, this is going to boomerang on them because they crafted the most vicious lie they could and sold it as if it was absolute truth from the beginning because they are concerned about you. They are scared of you with a third party run or or if somebody picked you for a VP. They know you've been talking behind the scenes some to the libertarians. Uh, and their concern, so they, 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 they put something out saying you were glad that Navy SEALs were dead in front of their family, the most sickening thing you could say to military people. They, when they made their move on you, they did it when you were out of the country, they forged the most wicked lie they could, and uh, you, know, you say you will defend yourself, you're not stupid, you've got to. You're not going to probably, the way they're hyping it, uh, do very well from this unless you absolutely you know, go after these people, and you know that, and so I, God knows what's coming next if, if they're going to uh, move with something this dangerous. Yeah, I don't know, Alex, but uh, I'll be on my toes. I have to admit, though, this one caught me off guard. I never expected to be hit with what they hit me with. Well, they're going to make up a lie. So. If they're going to make, well, listen, Ty was telling me that, uh, that you were talking about, it's kind of arcane, but you know, being an expert on the JFK assassination and covering it in your hit TV show for True TV, uh, and people can read your statements, by the way, at The Real Jesse Ventura on Facebook. We're linked to the statement at Infowars.com. The article is exclusive. Jesse Ventura blast Navy SEAL punch hoax as a total lie. Uh, but, uh, you know, you talked about, uh, but, but in your own words, and I know you've got to go, 
uh, that this is like them mailing a rifle, uh, the Carcano, from Chicago to Dallas when you could buy a gun anywhere with no registration in 1963. You said, what are they going to start mailing guns from Chicago to you down in Baja, Mexico? I don't know, but uh, always remember, Alex, they, you know, they said that Oswald was in Mexico while they also said he was at a shooting range. And so I'm getting accused of doing all these things. Do you think there's a double of me? You know, there's that famous book, uh, Lee and Harvey. I believe Armstrong is the author. Do you think that they have a double of me out there that's causing all this trouble? <laughs> well, you know what? That is the exact kind of stuff they do. You know what they did to Garrison? He'd be in an airport and walk in the bathroom, and men would start trying to grab on him, and there'd be police waiting right there. I mean, uh, look, look, they're doing a whole bunch of this stuff to Ron Paul, too, right now. They, again, they put out a fake video saying it was his, making fun of Asians. Fox, CNN all took it, and it turns out now it goes back to one of the, the people he's running against, and they're even bragging about it. That's how dumb they think the public is. So pray for Jesse Ventura, pray for Ron Paul, pray for me, uh, because folks, you know, we're not perfect, but we're not under the globalist insider's control, and that's why we're wild cards, we're loose cannons. The system is scared of us. Governor, thank you so much. Uh, okay, one, one, one last thing, Alex, one last thing. I want to state on your show first. My wife and I are not suicidal. We're in great health. We're good drivers, and, uh, we and we don't have Twitter. So anybody that says that I've Twittered anything, I, you know as well as I do, I don't own a cell phone. And you got to own a cell phone to Twitter. So anything done on Twitter is also false. But again, Alex, we're, we're not suicidal. We're in good health, and we're very good drivers. Well, you and your wife are very smart, so I don't have to tell you something you don't know, but for some of the new audience, may not understand. I told Ty the same thing off air. I said, uh, you know, sometimes they do a really bad demonization and then they kill you so that you can't defend yourself. So I'm glad you got this out here. And, and, and please, viewers and listeners, make sure you get this out to everybody, to everybody out there. Uh, because if they can destroy Jesse, folks, we got to stand together or hang separate, as Ben Franklin said. That's why we got to stand with Governor Ventura against this outrageous lie, because they'll get away with it with Ron Paul or anybody else that comes out in the future. We've got to stand with Governor Ventura right now. I mean, look at how they shut down that episode on the police state FEMA camps, which they now admit, and, and TSA is now on the highways, and they now admit the FEMA camps, Gov. Just last year, they, they banned your TV show. Homeland Security. I know we're not. I'm not supposed to get into the full story of them threatening the network and all the. I mean, and 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 and. Well, I'm not even supposed to talk about it. I mean, that show behind the scenes. You you guys had the guys breaking in and digging through the trash and. I know you. I'm not supposed to get into it. I, I you can say it if you want, Gov. I mean, now might be the time to go ahead and tell everybody what's been going on. Well, you know, it uh, again, Alex, uh, I'll let you take care of it. Um, I'm going to handle it on my end. And again, I appreciate you and I appreciate all the work you do for me. And thank you for appealing to everyone because you're absolutely correct. We have to hang together.